Uh, okay, dispatch light. Um, I don't have it on the slide, but maybe just to, considering we've got plenty of time, a quick recap then. Um, if you remember, with our uh, RTP design, we proposed introducing a new form of dispatchable demand that we would, you know, a bit tongue in cheek, calling DD light, meaning that um, it was designed to be attractive to smaller consumers, you know, those that um, aren't purchasing enough to warrant maybe the um, additional cost and burden of becoming full uh, dispatchable demand. Um, the idea being that you could sign up, you could be dispatchable, you could still set the price, but you would have the option to say no if you received, rather than a dispatch instruction, it would be something that we introduced called a notification. Um, with the trade-off there being that you could say no not too often, and if you did do it too often, you might be kicked out of the scheme. Uh, and you wouldn't be eligible for uh, constrained on or off payments in, in contrast to um, full DD. At the time, there's another, there's another parameter there that we, we hadn't uh, fully appreciated, and that's the role of telemetry. So real-time, at least SCADA-like indications about what you're actually doing for that controllable load source. So uh, the reaction to that proposal was, shall we say, fairly skeptical. Um, either that anyone would really use it or that it's going to provide um, material enough benefits to warrant actually including it. Um, and if I remember correctly, I said off the cuff at one of the briefing sessions we had in August um, that we thought it was fairly trivial costs um, and certainly wouldn't really impact on the time to build real-time pricing. Fair enough. Um, submitters pushed back on that a little and said, well, we, we want more information on what, what it would, uh, or, or at least there was concern that it would be adding non-trivial costs or that it would um, actually be slowing down the delivery of real-time pricing. Um, as I mentioned earlier, at the same time, we had at least one submitter, um, and arguably two, asking us, um, well, why can't distributed generation use this? Um, particularly if for whatever reason, those generators feel that um, signing up to be full offered generation today is um, too onerous a burden. So that makes a lot of sense. Um, it's essentially the same logic underpinning providing a dispatchable demand version for a light version for small purchases. It makes sense that you should be able to do something similar for generators. Um, so what we want to do is flesh this out more and incorporate that idea of having a generation option uh, and that will not, maybe that's one of the fillings, but not the full meat in the sandwich for this secondary consultation. Uh, but we, we, the authority in Transpower, at least I think I speak for Transpower when I say this, we definitely still see important benefits in providing that less onerous, more flexible version of being dispatchable for consumers and as, as I say, for generators. So I mean, to reiterate, what that would do is it helps to signal your intentions ahead of real time and that should flow through to more accurate forecast information and more efficient and therefore more actionable prices in real time. If you compare that to the counterfactual where no one's dispatchable, either distributed generation or smaller purchases, so there's no information on what their intentions are and all you see is the results of their actions on the power system and then flowing through into prices. Um, as I say, we think there's certainly merit in doing the same thing for distributed generation in the same vein that would give the coordinators better visibility of what generation is actually doing past those, past the transmission grid. So we've inve investigated this um, with the system operator to flesh out some of the details um, and we'll incorporate that within secondary consultation. Um, the final design of what that might look like isn't, isn't fully bedded down yet, but I'm just going to canvas what we think that would look like. Question. Wouldn't that fit better under the um, improved forecasting? And Sorry, just um, wouldn't that fit better under the improved forecasting initiative than real time pricing? Well, uh, I take your point, uh, presumably because I refer to improving the accuracy of those forecasts. Prices. Yep. Yeah, improved accuracy of forecasts too, and it just seems a better fit within that work stream than real time pricing. Uh, certainly, there are overlaps in that doing this 
if we're correct, or to improve the forecast accuracy by revealing those intentions better than with better information than we have today. But the reason why it would be done, or at least we think it would be done, I was going to say as part of real-time pricing, but but it it could be considered a bit of a um, an add-on, although that really hinges on what options we take with the design. But the key reason why we would do it as part of real-time pricing is that it involves dispatch. And to do that, we have to modify some parts of the market system to introduce essentially a pair of new dispatch products and at the same time update the interfaces on WITS to incorporate um, the corresponding changes for bids and offers. Um, but we can, we can look at that if, if it could be incorporated within other programs of work. I mean, they are separate projects, but clearly it's a lot of um, balls in the air that need to be coordinated. So whether it fits under RTP or sort of sits in both camps, we can, we can work through that um, as part of this consultation. Um, so what, what we're thinking now, as I said, is it's just a pair of products using essentially mirrored features. Both would be able to set dispatch prices both would be dispatched using notifications from the real-time dispatch schedule. And as I said, those notifications don't have the full sort of compliance weight of dispatch instructions. And that means that you can say no if you do it rarely, and you would say no by um, rebidding or reoffering immediately. Um, you would become non-dispatchable at least for the end of the, till the end of the trading period. And that's another aspect we'd want to consult on is sort of how long should you be out when you say no. Um, we think that would be a, a, a new form of a bona fide. Um, as I said, you wouldn't get constrained on or off payments. Um, obviously, off, constrained off only applies to dispatchable demand anyway. And your uh, approval to be part of this um, product would be at the discretion of the system operator. Partly that's going to hinge on your eligibility could well be based on the system operator's assessment of the impact on uh, your, the impact on the security of the system. So what, what potential increase in risk to the system does that provide? And the reason why would be uh, because we would assume that certainly for the smaller purchases as dispatchable demand and probably for distributed generation there may be no um, real-time telemetry, so no SCADA indications available to the system operator to see what you're actually doing in real time. Um, if there was, maybe that would be the line that indicates you should be moving to the full DD or offered generation. Um, but as I say, that's, that's a point that we can tease out in consultation. If it is based on um, those participants that don't have real-time telemetry in order to mitigate the potential risk to the system. Um, well, what I've actually got on the slide is, is one option, which is to um, implement megawatt limits um, at each node and across each electrical region that would just essentially, if I remember this correctly, uh, limit the total quantity that was subject to this form of dispatch to essentially within the frequency keeping band. Um, but the, the test would be the, the consequences for system security. Um, if we did not do that, the more costly option would be to change the medium term load forecast, so the forecast that goes into the forward schedules, to reflect the fact that um, the quantity of uh, energy being consumed by DD light or being produced by distributed generation um, is stated in their bids and their offers respectively and then we would need to update the medium term load forecast to account for those for those quantities. Um, that does not exist today. So avoiding that work and the additional cost of doing that, um, it, sorry, if we use limits to restrain the total megawatt quantity at each node and across the region, that would avoid the need for modifying the medium term load forecast and that means essentially we could deliver this product at a, at a lower cost. So that's, that's one of the trade-offs that we want to test through consultation. Um, assuming that we go with that uh, megawatt limit version, uh, compliance would be assessed monthly after the fact from metered data 
again, because you don't have real-time telemetry, so there's no, no ability for the system operator to see if you're on or off dispatch at any given point in time. Um, it would not be a breach of the code to say no to that dispatch notification, as we've said. If you do it too often, you might get kicked out, maybe for a month, maybe permanently. We can work through that. Um, but that's only if you follow the correct process and you advise by rebidding or reoffering, um, you know, declaring that new form of bona fide, and that you follow all notifications that you didn't say no to otherwise. So if you don't follow them, then you're in breach of the code in the same sense as you are if you don't follow an instruction. Well, in theory. Um, your continued eligibility would depend, like, as I say, on how often you say no, um, and maybe something like a three strikes rule across a month, across a quarter. Um, yeah. uh, really, we said this in the last consultation anyway, but it's certainly, um, it's definitely true that the system operator's dispatch service enhancement project um, is a key enabler for this because it will make it much easier to introduce this new pair of dispatch products. Um, and just very briefly, I'm sure you all know, but the DSC project is about replacing the existing Genco system for dispatch with um, two new alternate communication protocols, uh, namely um, ICCP and um, web services. So for example, um, we're going to have to move DD from its current, sorry, this is the full classic version of dispatchable demand, from its current process where it's dispatched ahead of time from the NRS um, through WITS into uh, being dispatched from the real-time dispatch schedule, so that means you need to be able to receive instructions, um, and the DSC project will make, mu that, make that much easier um, because we should be able to do that, for example, using web services over the public internet, um, as opposed to having to go and put in a dedicated communication link and a Genco terminal. So by the same token, being able to sign up to these products um, using this uh, much lower cost uh, easier to um, set up communication protocol options in DSC will um, make this much more viable. Um, and then depending on after consultation where we land with the ultimate design of these products if we decide to proceed, it's likely that there would be, that we would minimise the total cost of delivering it if we do this as part of real-time pricing or perhaps as a side part of that um, load forecasting work you know, while we've got the hood up. So um, there may be, there'll be some changes at the least to introduce these new dispatch products in the market system. Uh, and as I said, some changes needed to WITS to account for um, the different types of bids and offers and probably also in, in the back end, the way that WITS is communicating back to the market system, um, potentially for clearing and so on as well. So yeah, that's just a bit of an overview of where we think we want to take this with secondary consultation. Any questions? Um, Justin, what, what do you think would incentivise people to uptake on uh, dispatch lights over an EDB? I mean, not actually, you know. What, what was the what, second What would, would incentivise an, an EDB to uptake dispatch light? An EDB? Um, okay, well, you call me, I don't know, we hadn't, I'm not sure we really thought about that. Um, so do you mean as the mechanism to receive, say, instructions for emergency load shedding, or...? Yeah, well, they're not subject to... Yeah, I mean, the, the, the emergency load through TPM charge is not through the, the market, so if the handy incentivise it, they need to be able to take the dispatch load to help the forecast. That's, that, that might be a problem for us. Uh, well, I suppose, I mean, the, the, the idea here is that it, the incentive would lie with those that are exposed to the wholesale price signal. And clearly that, in combination with transmission pricing, those that are exposed and the incentives they have may change over time. But, I mean, certainly our focus here is on um, participants that buy and sell electricity in some form um, to incorporate them, to in increase their participation within that wholesale dispatch. Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, yeah, I guess I'm looking at it from a forecasting um, accuracy point of view where that most of all the forecasting accuracy is driven by EDBs managing demand without... Yeah. Without well, okay, so for, for the sake of the recording and those on the web, um, 
the extension of that is that, so the question is that most um, EDBs are engaged in managing load and how that um, affects the accuracy of the forecast. Um, in, sorry, the wholesale forecast. Sorry, Marion, did you want to say something? Oh, I was just going to say that that, that was um, some of the specific questions that the authority asked Transpower to provide a, a view on and options under the improving spot pricing, which is basically improve the load forecast. So, so there's a there's a separate work stream um, <coughs> on that, and then under real time pricing, we all have uh, a benefit. Admittedly, it, it won't necessarily be forecast. Um, but once you get to the trading period, you'll see the impact of any EDB's load control because it'll be picked up in the next dispatch schedule to say, you know, load has dropped or the load hasn't got as high. Um, and then the, the forecasting will be captured under that improve the load forecast project. But um, it's, it's, it's an interesting idea. Um, if it was a low cost way of doing things, and what we have said in the past that um, if you remember, we, uh, we were saying we didn't think the system operator needed to change its processes to deal with um, instructing emergency load shedding, which predominantly means um, talking to distributors. Um, but over time, particularly once this DSC project is in place, perhaps um, EDBs would, be, would prefer to receive electronic instructions through the dispatch process. Um, this could be a way to implement that. Um, yeah, that's, that's something we'll, we'll go and think about. Um, uh, do you envision there will be any uh, visibility of uh, the offers that are DD light um, in, for example, supply and demand or in a different schedule such as we've currently got NRS, PRS, would you have a, another schedule? Um, certainly not a new schedule, but uh, I think, just off the top of my head, it would be good to be able to differentiate, uh, like, yeah, I have to think about that, but it makes sense intuitively to be able to differentiate um, bids and offers, although, of course, taking care not to reveal information that could distort behaviour, etc. Um, but yeah, if, if you look at the, um, the aggregated price stacks and demand stacks on WITS at the moment, um, you know, you get that difference where the only thing which is in the demand stack on the NRSS is the dispatchable bids and in fact they may be anonymised because there's one participant so it would stick out and be discoverable what the, the price threshold was. So as Justin was saying that the intention would be to feed them in if, if they're dispatchable they're going to be in both the NRS and the PRS and would then add some steps into that demand curve. Um, so yeah, that they'd be visible and then they would be um, included in the file of offers and bids and reserve offers and everything that's made available the next day. So, yep. yeah, I guess it's just uh, if people are allowed three times a month to say no, yep. then you know you could have reasonably significant differences between the forecast and the actuals that people might go, oh right, there's not actually anyone there going to cap the price at $200, it's actually going to go and just yep. providing a wee bit more certainty around that is... Yeah, uh, I, I see your point, um, that, that's something that would be good to tease out through consultation. Um, I was going to say something and it's just disappeared. Um, I guess the, the other thing is is that after, if we were to progress this, I think we would have reports or we'd consider how it was going and if the number of get out of jail things were handing out to people, they were abusing that or something or there were too many, but have to refine it uh, through time. Yeah, uh, I, I can't say this definitively. Uh, there's another existing authority project looking at um, trading conduct, but I think it's fair to say as a principle, even if you might not be caught for a month, because we can't assess that until after the fact, if, if you're gaming it um, and if you're systematically using this ability to say no to um, distort prices, well, um, well I, would, I would expect that should fall foul of um, good trading conduct provisions. 
Um, the, the other thing is, as Justin was saying before, you know, the, the load which may find this appealing is out there and is behaving as they want now. So, you know, we, we're coming unstuck in terms of price certainty and goals of price certainty in the current environment because they're included in the forecast, then they don't turn up because they've decided that the real-time price is too high and then that forms part of all the historical information that forms the forecast for tomorrow and the same day next week. So any anything we can do that, that gets more price discovery um, and intended behaviour out of people, even if they're not 100% compliant, is, is likely what is hoped to be better than the current situation where we're, we're just dealing with after the fact. OK, well, move on to pricing errors then. Sorry, Justin. Oh, one more question. Hi, Justin. Uh, you covered a lot, and um, since we're the only participant in dispatchable demand, I guess a we'll, um, couple of questions or points. Firstly, EMI already discloses the Norski um, price, <laughs> so it is publicly discoverable now. And um, yeah, I think that's that's only the next day. So yeah, but if it doesn't change from day to day, it's pretty predictable. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, but, but that's your choice, of course. Yeah, that's our choice. Yeah. Um, you covered a lot. Um, I guess one of the questions is dispatchable demand um, gives us about 23 minutes for us to change our load from when we're dispatched. Will we continue to have that 23 minutes, you know, to... No. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I, th I think we, we may be best having a... We'll have a chat with you at, at lunchtime or... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, might be, but but to be to be clear, so um, dispatchable demand is currently dispatched uh, roughly as as Alan was saying about twenty five minutes ahead of time from the NRSS schedule. If system operator reruns another NRSS that um, supersedes the the standing dispatch, so it's whatever the latest NRSS scheduled quantity for the future trading period is that forms the the dispatch instruction, under RTP, because we're now going to be striking settlement prices in real time, the thinking was no one should have the benefit of forward scheduling um, and, and picking up the fact that you were locked in, say, 25 minutes ahead and that that um, takes precedence over evolving and changing system conditions. So the, the design as it stands of RTP is to move dispatchable demand into the dispatch schedule along with instantaneous reserves and generation. So everybody's being dispatched at the same time. 